the feed. Our thoughts on the complete rewrite of Overcast. What's new for Apple Podcast iOS 18? Talking about overlap and TwinBox. Why can't podcast engagement and feedback all be in one place? Oh my gosh. One year stats of an audio podcast on YouTube music. Yes, I do share stats of the feed on YouTube and what that looks like. Plus, geographic and user agent download numbers. Hello, I am Elsie Escobar, Director of Community and Content for Libsyn. And this is episode 273 of the feed, the official Libsyn podcast, the podcast that takes it beyond how to start a podcast into keeping you podcasting with podcasting tips and information for the everyday podcaster and taking you inside Libsyn now. If you would like to get featured on the show, I would adore to feature your 30 to 60-ish second promo. You will hear some great promos in the rest of the episode here. And it's so easy to do it. You can just attach it to an email, send in your audio. You know how to do that stuff and send it to the feed at libsyn.com. Now, if you don't have a finished promo, but you want your voice on the show, you can just tell us. You can literally record. It's as if you're leaving a voicemail for your friend and say like, hi, I'm so-and-so. My podcast is about this, this, and that. And I'd love for you to listen if this and this and this, if you're interested in these things. So super easy. Keep it to under, you know, 60-ish seconds and send it over. You can call at 412-573-1934, or you can record it over at speakpipe.com at speakpipe.com slash the feed. Now, if you do have a question or a conversation around an issue or topic that we cover in an episode, you can also call us and just give us your thoughts. We love to feature that type of feedback on the show. And remember to also promote your show at the end. This is so-and-so from whatever episode or whatever podcast. In that way, you get a little bit of promotion that way. I'll be keeping an eye out on my email and then I will send you all the information depending on uh, whether or not we are going to be featuring you on an upcoming episode or anything like that. And it is first come, first serve. So the sooner you get the info to me, the sooner I'll get you in our queue. And now on to our main conversation with Rob Walsh, VP of Podcaster Relations at Lipson, as well as my co-host, right after the first promo of the episode, She Thrives. Let me ask you a question. Were you a big fan of Saved by the Bell? Me too. And that tells me you're listening to the right podcast. Because after a 10-year journey to cure my health issues, I learned so much. And now I am on a mission to demystify health and wellness for women in their 40s, just like me. Hey, everyone. I'm Ashley Bagney, and I take what feels complicated and overwhelming, make it simple, easy to understand, and give you tips and steps that you can actually do to get the lasting change you've always wanted. As a certified health coach, my passion has been helping my clients feel better than ever before, and I cannot wait to change your life too, here on She Thrives. Hello, Rob. Good generic time of the day, Elsie. How are you doing? All right. We we have started. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. So what, before we continue on, though, why don't we just chat about where you are? So give us the what's what of your location, your sound and all of those wonderful, fun things. Well, I'm, I'm in a new location with much slower Internet, like 50 meg down and 10 up. Ooh. Yeah, they, they don't have fiber at my new house. Um, we moved. Uh, we're actually... So we did it really fast. We uh, put the house for sale on July 6th, had an offer on the 7th, and they wanted to be in by the 26th. And if it wasn't for Microsoft, or not Microsoft, but that strike thing, we would have closed technically on the 26th. Now it's being pushed to August 1st. But that said, we had to be out before the 26th, which is our original plan. So we went with that plan and we were moved over here by the 24th. So 
yeah, it's been hectic, but my studio is not up yet. So I'm doing, I'm recording like I would be if I was on the road with the Shure SM58 connected to the MV2 QU, whatever. It's called, let's give it a good shout out because it's doing its job. All right. So it is the Shure digital audio interface MVX to you. Thank you. You bet. <laughs> the only reason I know that is because I have a box right in front of me. Because I love that little machine so much. And yeah, it just is in front of my desk. And normally I have the box right in front of me as well. But it's the box is in a box. Yeah, it's it's not unpacked yet. But that said, of course, the adapter was available because it's in my recording equipment in my that I keep at the bottom of my laptop bag. And yeah, so I'll be setting up my studio, a new studio this weekend, hopefully so. It won't right. be as good as audio as the last studio because it's a, we're just renting for a bit until we find the the house. The house, yeah. Yes. There's always something so incredible about being able to be flexible and know the core tech that you need as you never know where you're going to be recording. And so I'm I'm all for it. Sounds pretty decent. Uh, sounds yes. pretty decent. All right, so let's start by just giving a little bit of a shout out here, folks. First of all, happy 10th anniversary to Overcast. I gave uh, Marco a little bit of a shout out uh, in the last episode during our intro. And I, I, I have you been playing with the with the new revamped yeah. Overcast and things like that? Have you? It's very clean. And for the most part, all the features I need are there. Looks good. I mean, looks really good. The key is one of the reasons I use Overcast. It does the best job at clipping out and pitch shifting the voice when you speed it up, in my opinion. Oh. Yeah. So that's why I like it. So when I listen to a podcast at one and a half speed, it sounds better than on almost any other app at one and a quarter speed. Yeah. Yeah. So I I really like how Marco's done that and... Those key features are there. And and I love the fact that on a per show basis, you can set up that pitch shift. It, you know, maybe some shows you want to speed up even more, right? You want right. to go to 2x and then others you want to slow it down, maybe go one and a quarter. And so you can do that. And I like that. And yes, so I've been using it because I, I do use it to listen to some of the podcasts. So I split between it and the Apple podcast app for my listening. Sweet. Well, I'm going to read a little bit of what Marco mentioned, and then I'm going to give you some thoughts around my consumption because I have, I actually been using it, sent out the beta and stuff like that. So, all right. So this is what he mentioned on his blog post. I'll have a link to the blog post so that you all can read it. And it was also a little notification that was within Overcast itself. So he can make little notices in there. And this is what it said, quote, On the 10th anniversary of Overcast 1.0, I'm happy to launch a complete rewrite of most of the iOS app built to carry Overcast into the next decade and hopefully beyond. So what's new? It's much faster, modern design, and there's lots of improvements throughout, such as undoing large seeks, new playlist priority options, and easier navigation and more. So what's not most features? Overcast is still over. Cast. The audio engine, it's the best part of Overcast and still leads the industry in sound quality, silence skipping, and volume normalization. Uh, more soon, he says. The business, I'm still a one person operation with no funding or external ownership, serving only my customers. My principles, I always want to make the best podcast app and I'll never disrespect your time, attention, or privacy. What's gone? Streaming. Most big podcasts now use dynamic ad insertion, which causes bugs and problems for streaming playback. On today's fast networks, downloading episodes completely before they begin playback is much more reliable. What's next? Smarter options for downloading and deleting episodes. The last few missing features from the old app, such as shortcut support, storage management, and OPML. Upgrading the Apple Watch app to the new Faster Sync engine. More features, including some of your most requested features over the last decade. Thank you for your patience as I get there. Now, I'm going to read this last part because I do feel that this is as important almost as the entire rewrite itself. And I feel that there's a lot of folks that overlook some of these, the, the basic foundation as to why some apps can't pivot, if you will, as fast as others. 
And, you know, there are times when getting in right out of the gate is a huge asset. And then the way in which things are built changes at a, at, at a real accelerated rate. And it's very hard to build the, you know, the bones of something from scratch when the foundation keeps on shifting, especially when you started earlier. And this is what he says. He really captures that very much. He says, quote, most of overcast code was 10 years old, which made it cumbersome or impossible to easily move with the times, adopt new iOS functionality or add new features, especially as one person. That's why there haven't been many new features or changes in years. You saw it and I saw it. I wasn't able to serve my customers as well as I wanted. For Overcast to have a future, I needed a modern foundation for its second decade. I've spent the past 18 months rebuilding most of the app with modern languages and frameworks, and I'm thrilled to finally share it with you. Now, development is rapidly accelerated. I'm more responsive, iterating more quickly, and ultimately making the app much better. Thank you so much for the first decade of Overcast. Here's to the next one. And that's from Marco. Yay, Marco. I love Marco. And, and I love the fact that he's doing this as a one person. The third most popular place where people consume podcasts is Overcast. And he's doing it as a one person company. It's amazing. Kudos. To be able to serve the vast audience that he has in that fashion, yes. And kudos to him as well for putting up with grumpy people <laughs> and people who don't understand and are in, in a, many different perspectives of, of what it actually takes to make this happen, right? So I'm glad he's continuing on. I'm glad that he is iterating. I'm glad that he has done what he's done. And First of all, before I start, I just want to say to anybody who's listening here who is looking for a podcast app to listen to or that you have gotten kind of stuck, not stuck, but you've decided this is your app of choice because I've done that for many years. I know how hard it is to shift from one app to the other. It's sort of like when you're going to a new, and I use this metaphor all the time, when you're switching podcast apps, it's like you are now going to a new grocery store. The same stuff is there. You can still buy your groceries. You just don't know exactly where all the groceries are. And it's going to take you a little bit to find where the milk is. Okay. Sometimes it tends to be in the back. That's where the dairy and the, you know, the milk options are usually, but sometimes they're not there. Sometimes they're on the side. <laughs> sometimes they move in a diff to a different location. And sometimes they don't have the exact milk that you're looking for, but this one will do and maybe you'll discover a new milk. So that's how I sort of deal with the whole podcast listening app ecosystem. I love the new functionality. One of my favorite things about the new Overcast is the way that I can make it look the way that I want to make it look. I am a very visual person. And so now whenever I go into Overcast, all of my little playlists have their own little icon that I chose <laughs> and they have the little colors that I chose and I can name it the, what I want. So I have a playlist that's called No Think, <laughs> which I put on and the, the things that are in there are not going to make me think about anything other than just enjoy a conversation. You know, there's other ones that are my ride or dies in there. I have one that's my stationary playlist. It's so easy to be able to do that. You can choose your icon. You can choose your color. It's very easy to be able to put them in there. I'm still trying to figure out what the contextual menus are in an easy fashion, in a way that I can really quickly sort through the podcast that I want to listen to. So I'm, again, I'm looking, I'm at the grocery store. I'm trying to figure things out where things are. And um, Marco has an there's like the depth of the settings that are in there per episode and also for the nitpicky stuff. Like if you want to make it go back mm -hmm. 45 seconds instead of or, or 10 seconds every time you put the, the back button or you can move it forward for more than 30 seconds. You can move for 45, 60 seconds or 15 or 10. So there's all of these tiny little things that are really great for the way that you want to listen to podcasts, you do have to dig inside of those settings in order to do that. This is not new, by the way, guys. There's a lot of apps that do things like this. But the whole um, voice boost for podcasts, I love mm -hmm. that. I love what you're talking about in terms of the speed, even though I don't 
use that functionality very often and it supports all of the basic stuff that most apps support. Do you listen at 1.0? I do. I know. Shocking. I am that person. I knew there was somebody out there listening at 1.0. I am that person. I very rarely, once in a while, I think it depends on the person who's speaking, but I cannot off the top of my head remember which ones I do move forward a little bit, but I am that person. Yes, it is me. Yeah, one and, one and a quarter for me is about as low, unless it's a music podcast. Everything is, most is one and a half, and there's a few that I listen at 2x. Wow. Yeah, no, I am that that person, just because, uh, anyway, I'm not even going to discuss why I like that, but <laughs> again, there is that. So I'm really digging it. I really am digging Overcast. I think that I, I have it in my um, widgets, and I'm totally using it. I also have the Apple Watch app there. And I have been a paid subscriber to Overcast or supporter to this app for a long time, even though I wasn't using it. But I think part of it is just because I wanted the extra features. I also sent in, you know, you can upload your audio to that. That isn't a podcast as well. So I had somebody send me their first podcast episode and I listened to it in Overcast through the uploads feature. That's a really cool functionality that I really appreciate there. So there's a lot of little things. I'm still figuring out a lot of it. I've been sitting around and seeing how I can get Marco some thoughts around just my brain and how it consumes content and whatnot. I don't want it to become a Castro clone because I do recognize that the way that that app works is different than most other apps works. And it really likes to do what it does, that specific thing really well. So I'm still trying to figure where I fit in overall in my listening, but I'm really pleased with it. But, and again, I love to open the app and see my customization. I don't know why that makes me so happy. <laughs> anyway, all right. that is all. All right. So more Apple podcast news. This article came out last week and it's called Here's What's New for Apple Podcasts in iOS 18 from 9to5Mac. One item, if a podcast offers chapters such as 9to5Mac, happy hour, you'll now see all of those chapters demarcated in the playback scrubber. The current chapter title will be displayed above the playback scrubber too. I like that. Yeah. It's really cool because like, if you see it, um, most of the chapter marks tend to be in the show notes and or you have to tap and then it pops up a little thing that shows you all the chapter marks. But this is like in a, in the scrubber fashion. It's very, it looks very much like the way that chapters are handled in YouTube, just YouTube proper. So when you look at the little line, you see the little chapter things and then it actually pops up the name of the chapter, which I thought is really cool about that as well. And it does a little haptic feedback thingy like when you go on it, it goes to do you know that little <laughs> yep. i love that uh, let's see there's some other things let's see uh okay now when you're uh sharing a podcast uh you'll see a banner at the top of the share sheet that says from start tap this and you'll find the option to share the specific timestamp instead or when you're viewing a podcast transcript you can long press the paragraph you'd like to share and you'll be see an option to share a link with that timestamp. So some nice options there on sharing specific parts or the specific part of an episode. Yeah. I love, 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 love that for sure. Uh, now, just like uh, the music and TV apps, podcasts will pull in search results with every character you type. Um, so in other words, predictive search results. Predictive, yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll start to pop it and populate mm -hmm. it in there. I'm I'm curious how all that stuff went. Wait, so that's not really new. Oh. I, I don't know why they call that. Yeah. No, I've seen it happen before, but I'm also maybe it's the how fast it is and and maybe yeah, I don't know. I, I'm curious what will happen if they start somebody starts to write T H mm -hmm. or T H E. <laughs> yeah, I I don't think I think I think nine to five Mac missed on that one. I think that that's been around predictive. We talked about predictive results. So in iOS 18, those plain text timestamps are automatically converted into links. So yay. So that's what you do in our show notes. Yeah. 
And there's been, I know that Marcos, I know Overcast has been able to do that for a long time. I I did find, I can't remember what the other podcast app that I just tested out and it did that. I think Spotify might also do that as well. So if you do write that your time codes in your show notes and somebody taps on that, it will automatically go to that part in the, you know, in the part of the episode. What it won't do is it won't do the little t- haptic feedback pop up title name of the in quote chapter because the chapters are different. The chapters are the ones that you yourself write in when you are putting in the file and or if you are using a third party to add it to your ID3 tags. Whereas this is just the written timestamps within the description. So so if you're a true crime podcaster, you could like put like eight or nine time codes in there in a row. And the first word you hear as you tap on each one is the word you have to write down to get a hidden message. Oh my God. Good Lord, Ralph. <laughs> if, if anyone does that, let us know. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. All right. This is another podcast app that I just came across and I tested it very, very briefly. One thing I do have to say about this podcast app, it's called Overlap, is I love their branding. I think their branding is so great. It's so pretty and bright and colorful and lovely to look at. I really like the branding. Uh, what uh, doing over, uh, excuse me, Overlap is, is an AI powered podcast assistant. Ask it about any topic or person and it'll give you a custom podcast playlist of clips relevant to what you asked for. It is a breakthrough way to listen to podcasts. I don't know if it's breakthrough, but (laughs) I tested it very briefly. I did not follow through in like how I get to the podcast that it shared with me. And the results that I got were iffy, Uh, but I'll tell you how it made up for it. So I downloaded the app. I went into it and... I did not sign up for an account, which it asked for. I just said I wanted to go in as a guest. Then you have to ask it, like, what do you want to learn about? I think it prompts you sort of like chat GPT style. Mm -hmm. And then you go in there and then you ask it, what do you want to learn about? And I just wrote stationary. That's all I wrote. I didn't ask anything else other than stationary. And then it did its little magic. And then it popped up like a series of seven episodes, I think, that were about 17 minutes long. And it grabbed bits of conversations of those episodes that it felt were relevant to my query. The bad of that was that not one of them talked about stationary. Not one. Not even a stationary podcast, okay? (laughs) So none of it. I mean, as in like stationary was not mentioned. The top stationary podcasts that I know exist, which are not there's a quite a few not one of them was suggested you're, what you're really saying this was a swing and a miss yes but hold on because that's just that's the negative part but the positive of it all though is that i actually did listen to the playlist that it provided and the bits that it shared all centered around analog practices it centered around productivity in a holistic way It also gave tips on writing notes and understanding and processing and brain things. The good part is the fact that the playlist was very relevant to what I like to talk about and the things I love and really. But it wasn't relevant to what you search for. Exactly. But it actually did give. It added to my love of why I use stationary. So I was very confused because it contextualized my search for the stationary and gave me philosophical uh, support of my love of stationary without mentioning stationary, if that makes sense. Now, I don't know if it's because the podcasts that are within the app itself that are being searched need to be added to a directory and there's a there's a core amount of podcasts there. Not all podcasts are in there. And so it also gave results to the famous podcasts, you know, like some of the people that we see all the time in the top whatever results. 
So it is biased in maybe the fact that it only pulled in the popular podcasts. And I don't think that there are stationary podcasts that get mm-hmm. very many, you know, the scope of listenership. I'm sure they're great in a small niche, but not larger. So I don't know what I feel about it. And also the other thing I didn't test is how what happens if I want to listen to the podcast or follow the show? I didn't follow through. Mm-hmm. Um, I would hate it if it's just a if you don't ever get an opportunity to connect with the show. And I don't want to be listening to podcasts in overlap. I have my other podcasts that I want to listen to my other podcast apps. So there's that. It's got some good funding. It's a Y Combinator show. So there's some, yeah, well, we'll see how it works out. Um, But I think maybe having search results that have to do with what you actually, I mean, specifically with what you search for. Yeah. Would be, you you would think that that would be something. Yeah. Like the actual term. Would that be a thing? I, mean, I would say I mean, yes. again, I'm not, I'm not, you know, if you're looking for some obscure thing, but you know, when you're listening to podcasts, you're usually trying to look for, listen to for more long form and Apple's podcast search is going to give you and Spotify search are going to give you podcasts usually on the topic, but Apple's definitely does. Mm-hmm. I, I absolutely agree. And Apple also has the bonus that it's, it is giving you search results based on the transcripts. Mm -hmm. So I have done some fairly in-depth tests on beauty products that have a weird name. Like, I can't even pronounce half the names. In all honesty, I don't even know how to pronounce the, the, the ingredients in some beauty products. And it has popped them up. It's doing fantastic in that respect. Um, very obscure terms that, and I'm, and there's very few podcasts that come up because who's talking about that stuff? And also they're really hard to spell. (laughs) <laughs> so um, they're hard. Those ingredients are very hard to spell. So if I were to really be doing research about a subject, I more than likely would go the Apple podcast way. Although I did appreciate the listen, that 17 minute listen. I really enjoyed it, mm-hmm. although it never spoke about my term. <laughs> so there's that. Okay. Okay. So let us move into another little toy that I've been playing with. This is, I actually talked to the team over at Twimbox, twimbox twimbox.ai. This is another AI company. And this one, uh, the whole thing around this one is that it turns your podcast into a revenue generator. So it's actually meant, it actually empowers a lot of people who really want to have paid products and services and things like that for their podcast in some way. And it is positioned as a way to uh, create content off of your podcasts and all kinds of other stuff that online entrepreneurs do. But I wanted to test it out because as you know, Rob, most of the time we have people who send us emails and they ask us, what do they ask us, Rob? Don't they ask us a core of about, I don't know, a handful of the same questions? How do I make money? Yeah. Well, how do they make money? How do I grow my show? What's the right length of an episode? Oh, and then the artwork. The artwork stuff, yeah. Uh, All of that stuff, like artwork stuff, encoding, Apple Podcasts, how to get featured in Apple Podcasts, stuff like that. So the Twinbox team pulled in a few episodes and I told them, I go, the problem that I have with our podcast is that we feature a lot of other voices on our show. We have promos and things. And a lot of the time it has a hard time figuring that out because the core of the conversation, it's just you and I, like, these are not speakers. These other people are not guests. It's just promo. And so they're like, let me test it out. So they pulled in about 80 of our episodes in there. And then they gave me the tool and I went in there and I asked it questions and it's kind of neat. You can ask it, what's the latest mean and median numbers? And it'll pop it up based on the podcast episodes that it has in there. And so I was like, oh, that's a really good way for us. Like I was thinking it more about you and I really quickly doing a search in there for our own show. And the bonus of Twinbox.ai too is that you can have this little chat box in your website. So you can put it, if, if we had a page that was standalone for just our show, we can have a little chat thing there where people can come in and go, what did Rob say about blah, 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 blah? When did he talk about XYZ? Or 
it actually pops up the frequently asked questions that we had based on that stuff. And it'll just, it just popped it up again. So it was really helpful. I'm still playing with it. I will show you and share with you my thoughts as I play with it some more, but it's kind of neat. It's a little pricey though. $90 a month for if you do it monthly for their standard plus. So that's the one they recommend. Yeah. If it's monthly, if it's annual, it's $62.99. There is something else that it does. Like it does all of this other stuff that I, I'm sorry, team twin box, but I'm trying to, I was trying to play with it. And I know that there's other things that it does as well that it will create for you based on your own content type of a thing. It's like a repurposing thing as well. Right. And that, and then it starts to compete with cast magic. There's other AI podcasting things out there. So it's sort of like it, it's in competition to that one. This one, I think the little thing, the little copy paste code that you can put on your website. I think that's nice. I like that. And this seems like a great time to have our second promo of the episode. This is You Are Worth the Work. Habit number one of people who have got their ducks in a row, or if they don't have the ducks all in a row, they at least know where the ducks are and the ducks are in the vicinity. (laughs) I like that better. For me, you know, my ducks don't have to be in a row, but I got to know where they are. The ducks have to be close within eye, within not eye shot, but you know what I'm saying. Anyway, habit number one, people who have work-life balance or who understand it, they know how important regular self-care can be. You could be a bubble bath kind of girl. You could be a meditation girl like me. You prioritize your self-care because you understand, which is the whole premise of this podcast, that when your cup is full, the overflow goes to everybody else. That almost ties into the last segment we just talked about. So, wow. I know. Good segue. Yes, yes. And again, folks, that promo was from the podcast, You Are Worth the Work. And I'm only saying that, Rob, because they didn't say it. In oh, so, but we did. Okay. But we did. Exactly. So just to let you know. Okay. Shall we move on to this little bit of feedback here? Yeah. Hi, Rob and Elsie. Since the Spotify feature that allows for listener engagement has happened, I've been wondering about something. Why would it be so difficult for all podcast hosts, such as Lipson, Captivate, etc., to give each podcast an additional tab? They already give us analytics, dashboard, episodes, etc. This additional tab would be for feedback, ratings, and other engagement. In my head, I see putting a link in the show notes, the listener tapping on it, and they would be brought to this feedback page. This would be ideal to gather data because it's on the host. I'm guessing it must be super difficult or impossible. Otherwise, we would have probably already seen it by now. I'm an Android person, and quite frankly, we're always getting the shaft. Oh, I know. I kind of feel you. Can you explain in your easy to understand way why this is so impossible? And this is from Dr. Faye, Mouthy Broad Media. All right. So I hope I understand the question, and and thanks for the feedback. And one, you've always been able to add in links to your episode in the show notes um, and many podcasters do this and they send people to community pages, forum boards, uh, sub stacks, Facebook groups, and so on. So yes, this can and is being done. The difference uh, between this and what Spotify is doing that you mentioned is the listener does the interaction in the Spotify app and does not need to go off to another site. That is the upside. The downside is it's just for Spotify users. I'm a fan of owning your own community board, and that is what I did in the heyday of Today in iOS. I had my community page I sent listeners to who were very active, and I often used the community page to get content for the next episode. I even had uh, an easy-to-remember URL. It was todayinios.com slash community. So, you know, having something you can mention and have links to for community. Now, if you are looking at tracking the metrics on that, you can add a bit.ly link. But it's not part of the podcast downloads. Now, Libsyn does have a unique feature for tracking, which is if you're sharing the direct URL or you have an embed code that you're sharing out there, you can put in our stats code 
uh, custom stats code. And then you can see how many people clicked on that. But that's more about the media file, listening to the file. So stats at podcast hosts are really focused around the media file and the consumption of that. If you're trying to, now I'm not sure again, if you were asking why they can't have the links or why the metrics aren't there, that again is the metric part is going to be something that's outside of podcast host preview. Maybe a Bitly link would be a good way for you to go there to track how many times people click on those links. I hope that answered your question. I tried to answer from two different perspectives. Uh, so hopefully one of those angles was the right one. I think that also there is a world in which somebody, there's a third party that's doing this for you. I believe that my podcast reviews did stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I might be wrong where they pulled in the ratings from, I'm not sure if it was just the ratings in Apple podcasts, but there are services out there that do pull in that for you. And then you can go in there and you can see that. And some of the bonus of some of these third party services is also that you can easily copy and paste the feedback that is coming through as comments and or ratings that are coming to your account. And I remember when Jess and I were getting that service, we would be getting an email. So it would send us an email as soon as anybody left us a review and we could easily read it. And it a lot arrived in you know our email box and we could check it out and use it for uh, publicity and marketing and stuff like that. And it did have a dashboard so that you're able to see that. Unfortunately, though, they they are disparate and you do have to pull them in from a lot of different places. I mean, maybe maybe those services are now going to start pulling in things that happen in Spotify. And it, it does make sense that it might be helpful to have it all in one place. But there are other places like Pocket Cast has a rating system as well. Um, I believe, was, is it CastBox also has ratings inside of it? So there's all of these different places that you can find and good pods also has ratings and they have a whole directory of ranking and things like that. And pod chaser also has ratings. Yeah. You can go on and on. And we can go on and on. Yes. On, yeah. Uh, yes, absolutely. And I think that part of it is that like Rob mentioned, it's not part of your RSS feed. It is separate situation. But the basic uh, understanding, I thought, I do feel that my podcast reviews or, and I know there's another one out there, I can't remember what it is, does pull it in for you and it place it into a nice little dashboard and you're able to see all the stuff and it's one place to go, but there are still other places to go in terms of feedback. What we didn't answer though is that communication part of it. And Rob kind of spoke a little bit about that. It is hard to get people, you have to tell people where to connect with you, where to have the community feedback. You need to teach your folks where to go. And, and every podcast should have a community, some feedback. If you're really, I liked it when I had it with today on iOS. It was a great way for me to get content. I just looked at what the community was talking about. It's fantastic. And it's, you know, we have our in quote community via email because that's what I can manage. And so most of the emails that we get back is our community. I have delineated the in quote community of the feed that way because I, I personally don't have the bandwidth to run a community for the podcast right now because it takes work. It takes work. All right. Let us know if we answered your question. And if not, email us back. Here's another email. Hi, Rob. I'm looking for a report of all the shows in Libsyn for each network and the date of the last uploaded episode. Regards, NR. Wowza. Now, this was, I should say this. This is for a user that they manage multiple networks. So they're not looking for all of the Libsyn shows and there's some outside person. This is, they manage multiple networks and each network has multiple shows. And they wanted to just have a quick list they could check at any point to see the most recent episode from each show, maybe to see who is and who's not still active and also get some info on the most recent episodes. For this query, they can use a service like Zapier to combine multiple RSS feeds into one feed. And we'll have a link to that in the show notes. What you would do then is add to the Libsyn feed slash last one. So slash L-A-S-T, the number one. 
to the end of each feed of the Libsyn feeds. So, for example, if your feed was feeds.libsyn.com slash, you know, a number slash RSS, after RSS, you would add slash LAST1. And then that feed would just have the most recent episode in it. And the master feed then would just have the most recent episodes for each feed that you added to that master feed. And that would become a list of the most recent episodes. Then whenever they need to check that, they could just, you know, that master feed from Zapier, they can take that master feed they got from Zapier and put it in over at scooterlabs.com slash hack slash rss2csv.php. We'll have a link to that. We've mentioned that service before. And it would export you a CSV file of all the episodes, which are now the most recent episodes of each feed for each show. But for what she was looking to do, that would probably be the easiest way to get a report. You just need to make sure each time a new show is added that you go and then update the master feed at Zapier with the new feed info, or the list doesn't become very accurate. Uh, now, Elsie, you mentioned, because I'd asked you, you know, which apps, and, and you mentioned that Castro can do something like this, possibly? Castro can, but you'd have to just subscribe to those shows. Like, you'd have to follow those, just the shows for that, right? It'll be a standalone solution for the problem that you're having versus you subscribing to other shows that you want to listen to because it, it essentially just does that. You can follow those shows and then it'll just add them. It comes into an inbox. You'll just see a list. Uh, as soon as an episode is released, boom, it just pops up into the inbox and you can see them all. And there you have them. I'm assuming you could do that You'd have to create a playlist and other podcasts in order to do that, for sure, right? But I think Castro, in terms of the way that it works, would probably be great as a standalone solution. Again, mm -hmm. not other podcasts. Especially if you wanted to listen to the episodes. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And then just add them to the queue so that you could do real queue, you know, real easy um, curation of, of quality assurance or control or whatever for some of those things. And you, yeah, you could do, you could totally do that. It'll just pop up, you know, and, but again, just the shows that you are in your network. I think it would be a great solution to sort through that. All right. You pulled some stats here. I did. YouTube, uh, the feed on YouTube as a podcast from April 2023 to April 2024. Yes, because we were there for a year, right? And I just wanted to kind of give a behind the scenes of sort of minimal promotion because we haven't done too much promotion of listen or consume our podcast on YouTube other than when I do a post overall, I go, hey, here's our show notes, wherever you get your podcast and YouTube. So I'll put a link to all the places and for a year, so that you all know, for a year worth of content, we only started putting the 2023, the feed episodes on. We did not add our back catalog. So we just started with April uh, for everything that we published in 2023. That's it up to now, up to. And so th that's what this data is from. So in general, overall, we've gotten 2.2K views. So 2.2 thousand views of our podcast. The watch time hours for the podcast has, was is 147.7. Uh, the majority of the links that we're getting, the traffic sources that are coming to us are coming from an external link, which makes sense because I do promote the show. Not, all, not a lot, but I do promote the show for that. And about 19% is coming from that. Then uh, the browse features is the next highest which is fantastic because that's just the features, you know, when people are browsing through stuff on, on YouTube. And that's what, that's again, the reason why we tell you to be on YouTube is to stumble upon traffic. Yep. Absolutely. And mind you, the external is 19% and the browse features is, is about 18%, a little over 18%. So that's, it's just one percentage, which is fantastic. Then we have the channel pages, which are at 17%. And the channel pages uh, is the Lipson channel, of course. Then suggested videos, and those are the ones that are on the right-hand side on YouTube proper, which you see those. That's at 11. And then lastly, YouTube search. So that's our last one at 11%. Those are the top five. Mind you, we get a lot more, but just wanted to tell you guys where the majority of those sources are coming from. 
they seem to be very organic in nature. It's not very directed promotion that I'm doing. Like I said, I usually post one social media post about our episodes and we have the link to the YouTube, which is great. Then the top episodes that got the most views, Rob, I thought this was kind of fun for people to look at because of the titling that are on there. So the number one that got the most views at 262 views is Video Podcasting Workflow on Libsyn. And that was our April 26, 2023 episode. That was, mind you, it is also the almost one of the the first few that we put out on the channel. Then we had, should you use the YouTube RSS feed ingestion? That was episode 255, and that one came out in November 2023. Number three, Apple Podcast iOS 17 updates and Spotify layoffs, and that was on June 2023. Number four, Podcast on YouTube Music Now, that was on May 2nd, 2023. And lastly, the number five is It's Okay to Only Have an Audio Podcast and Link Fire Excitement, and that was for... Episode 251. It's kind of funny. That was in September. the top five. One is about video podcasting workflow at the top of it. And at the bottom of the top five is it's okay to only have audio. <laughs> and a little contrast there. It's interesting. Now, I also did pull some key retention points that YouTube shared with me. So I didn't look for this stuff. These are top moments. And because YouTube has chapter marks and things like that, people did move to some of these chapter marks. And for the uh, episode, I think 251 there, it showed one of the key retention points there was you do not have to do video if you are podcasting or looking to get into podcasting. That was like, (laughs) that had one of the highest uh, retention rates portions of the episode. So you could see that people were uh, really interested in that, in that one for sure. And the other one was from episode 255 that said, Emerging Podcast Advertising Trends from Advertising Week, New York, 2023. So that was another part that I think called a lot of people's attention, which is cool because people are looking for the information you brought to us, Rob, I think, from that thing. And lastly, I'm going to talk about, um, as we lead into the stats portion from Rob, operating systems that are being used to consume the podcast so that we know here. So let's look at the top five Overall, the operating systems are Mac, iOS, Mac at the top, iOS 2, Windows number three, Android number four, and Linux number five. Yeah, there's a big gap between Android and Linux. Yes. So (laughs) the Android, which is number four, is at (laughs) 20.6%. And then Linux at number five goes to 1.3. So overall... Android, Windows, iOS, and Mac are the top. And the Mac at the top is at 26%. Um, so it's it's not too far off from even Android, which is at 20%. But, you know, so it's nice. It's, it's a fairly almost equal-ish if you really want to look at it that way. Now, the top devices that we have are the number one way people are consuming is at 49.2% via their computer. The next highest is mobile phone at 40.1%. And then the number three is TV. How about that, Rob? At 5.6%. That's even above the tablet. Yeah, that's surprising. Which is at 5%, which is like, what? Whoa. Somebody's opening the YouTube app on Apple Podcasts or somewhere and listening to this podcast. On Apple TV, yeah, because look at the consumption rate. The average view for that one is a lot more than the rest. So I think maybe it's one of those things where people put it on and they forget. (laughs) They put it on the TV that's in the kitchen and they go about eating, making a meal while they listen to us crowing about other stats. Yeah, I thought that was funny. But anyway, well, anyway, those are our YouTube stats. I just wanted to let you guys know so that you see what to expect. Overall, and we'll do another one, I think, at the end of the year to see what happened through all of these stats. Think about this. For those 123 people that did listen to us on TV, for those people at that moment in time, we beat out HBO and Netflix. Oh, my God. We are so fancy. Yes. With only a static image. I know. (laughs) With not even humans. That's wacky. Okay. 
Well, let us go ahead and move to promo number three before Rob continues on with some more stats for us. So here we go. Promo number three is Tacit No More. Hello, listeners. I'm Joseph Conyers. And I'm Yumi Kendall. This is Tacit No More, a podcast where we are asking the questions that need to be asked and saying the things that need to be said about classical music. We are back for a second season with eight new episodes coming out every other week this summer. We are honored to bring you more vital conversations that give voice to what needs to change in our sector. It's an important time to be elevating the topics we'll get into this season, and we certainly couldn't do it alone. Season two guests include advocates working to open up pathways for black orchestral musicians, visionaries fostering ecosystems to support arts education, and young professionals charting a new course in the sector. Throughout it all, we invite our guests and our listeners to ground what can be difficult work in a sense of realistic optimism and reconnection to our lives, meaning, and purpose. Please join us. Make sure to subscribe to the show on the platform you're listening to now. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Now we can get into the stats section or continue, really, since we already started on stats. But this is more not about us now. This is about everybody. It's about all of you listening. Uh, All right. So first up is country breakdown for June per download geographically from all sources. USA, number one, at 58.8%. Canada, number two, at 5.6%. UK, number three, at 5.4%. Australia, at fourth, at 36 Germany comes in fifth, at 2.9%. Sweden, then at 2.3%. India, at 1.5%. Spain, at 1.1%. And Netherlands, uh, at 1.0%. Uh, percent. And, oh, Japan, also at 1.0%. That's everybody 1% or greater. For rounding out the top 20 Mexico, France, Denmark, Brazil, Colombia, Belgium, Ireland, Poland, Norway, and New Zealand. For June, we had Poland break back into the top 20. And between May and June, those with changes greater than 0.2% were no one. Well, kind of boring. Of course, check your stats to see how you measure up to these numbers for June. And um, when we get into July, I'm sure we'll see like France or Germany drop when they go on vacation this summertime. All right, now um, per user agent info for June, across all shows globally hosting on Libsyn and Libsyn Pro for IAB Stats, mobile downloads were at 88.31% of all downloads going direct to mobile device. This is down versus May's 88.98%. Computer downloads were up at 11.22%. Home voice attendance plus set-top boxes were at 0.47% in June. The iOS to Android ratio in June was 3.19 to 1, which is exactly the same as May, which is the first month since the release of iOS 17, there was no drop versus the previous month. Mobile aggregator apps not from Spotify or from Apple in June were 12.3% of all downloads. And the big dog in aggregator apps is still Apple, with Apple Podcast app Uh, and the iTunes and the Apple podcast ecosystem coming in at 47.6% of all downloads for June. Number two for June was Spotify at 22.1. Overcast, as we mentioned earlier, was third at 2.7%. Pocket Cast fourth at 2.1. iHeartRadio fifth at 1.1. And that is everybody 1% or greater. Those under 1%, but greater than 0.3, the tier two group, would be Podbean, CastBox, Amazon Music, Podcast Addict, Google Podcasts, AntennaPod, and Player FM. And then the last tier, those uh, fall in between 0.2% and 0.02% in order are Downcast, Podcaster, Evox, Pandora, Samsung Podcast, Podimo, TuneIn Radio, Deezer, Fountain, Podcast Guru, Real Life App, Android, BeyondPod, Axios, Air Podcatcher, RSS Radio, Castro, Snipped, Stitcher, Dogcatcher, Podverse, Mixerbox, and Real Life App iOS. And then many more, I guess it'd be Tier 4, uh, that come in un- under 0.02% and don't really warrant mention yet. Again, those were based on IAB numbers for June for all shows on Lips and Lips and Pro. Outside of aggregator apps, there were browsers. Uh, Firefox came in at 7.3 and Chrome at 2.1%. 
and overall all browsers combined um, to about nine and a half percent of downloads in June. Once again, if you see a show with say over 10K downloads a month and more than say 15% from browsers, you might really want to question some of the things. Um, Typically speaking, the higher the total number of downloads for a show, the lower the percentage should be for browsers. And you know, that'll lead us into uh, where have we been? And I was a guest on Podtastic Audio. Chris had me as a guest on the show. And we talked about podcast fraud and how to identify bogus downloads and more around podcasting. But a lot of it was around metrics and what people are doing and how you can tell sometimes if things are not kosher. And I want to thank Chris for having me on the show. Uh, link in the show notes to episode 160 of Podtastic Audio. Thanks, Chris. So, Elsie, were you anywhere? I actually was watching stuff because I'm just going to tell us where we were uh, for Lips and we did a live event um, called The Value of Outsourcing Podcast Creation, and it went really well. Uh, We partnered with Bunny Studio and they just talked about all kinds of really wonderful things if somebody is looking to outsource and why it's important and things like that. So if you're at that stage in the game, check it out. It, It was very informative, really, really dug it. I've been in preparation mode for podcast movement. I was going to say, and then that leads us to where are we going? And that obviously is podcast movement coming up here, August 19th to 22nd. Yes, we have so many things that are happening. Actually, you know what? Before we get into the podcast movement at all, I want to tell you where we're going. We uh, actually, uh, Brian and I are going to be doing a live uh, together for the first time there. We're going to get kind of deep again on Uh, video podcasting, and not because we love it so much, but because we keep getting the same questions over and over and over and over and over again. So we're going to be talking about video podcasts on YouTube and Spotify, how to get your video podcast on YouTube and Spotify. So we will be walking you through a a walkthrough of how to do all those things, plus discussing pros and cons about it all, uh, because I, I think folks are still utterly confused about the whole situation of things. And we're going to break it down again, but come and hang out with us. It's going to be fun. That is on the day after you get this show, uh, which is going to be uh, July 31st at 2 p.m. Eastern. Head over to Lipson.com. I mean, excuse me, the YouTube, our YouTube channel over uh, search for Lipson and um, podcast movement. So podcast movement is going to be amazing. We are going to be doing, I'm going to be doing a session uh, called the State of Podcasting Community. That's going to be on Tuesday, August 20th at 1045. And I am having an expert talk with Ariel Nissenblatt about what community looks like today. Um, we also have uh, Brian is going to presenting be presenting YouTube and podcasting demystified uh, practical strategies for video and audio only podcasters. And that is yes, he's doing that on Wednesday, August 21st at 430. We also have Bob Kane and Anthony Savelli are going to be participating in Show Me the Money, How Creators Should Monetize Their Shows, 430 p.m. on August 20th. That's Tuesday. We also have Prior proper planning prevents poor performance. Oh my God. Say that four times fast. I'm so sorry, John, about the popping peas on that one. Holy crap. Okay. Why your ad operations team is critical for long-term sponsorship success. That is happening uh, August 21st at 3 p.m. on Wednesday. And I believe speakers for that one, uh, there's some uh, team members from... uh, uh, lips and ads. Sydney Dennis is going to be participating on that one. I think I th- I'm reading this list that um, Corey sent me, and I just I don't know. Lips and ads is going to be part of the obviously the advertising parts, and then lastly, we do have a session that is uh, right now in the middle of sort of changing a little bit. That's called driving organic messaging: the art of podcast brand integration. It may or may not be that, but that is happening Tuesday, August twentieth at four thirty. So we are going to be figuring that out. And lastly, folks, I'm doing a brain date called Podcasters and Their Stationery, The Power of Analog, Pens, Paper, Notebooks, Journals, and more. And you're going to need to show up and play with my stationery and share if you have fountain pens. It's going to be a just a meet and greet of other lovers of analog things. And if you've ever been curious about using inks and why inks are so amazing, why Japanese paper is so delicious 
and why fountain pens are to die for. You need to be there and put your hands on these things and I will walk you through it. (laughs) All right. Okay. That's it, Rob. Oh my God. Yes. Uh, Switching little gears uh, to where are you going? If you're looking for a job in podcasting, please make sure to go to podcastingjobs.com. That's podcastingjobs.com. And finally, don't forget to send in your feedback for anything we did or did not mention on this episode. You can record that feedback and email to us, the feed at libsyn.com, or you can call us at 412-573-1934. Finally, you can use SpeakPipe at speakpipe.com slash the feed. And that is it. Right on. We'll be back in a couple weeks. Yes. Bye. Ciao.